If I had my own Mandalorian helmet, I would definitely take it off because man, what if I sneeze and it gets all over the glass? What if I eat spaghettis all in my helmet? And what happens if I get sick? Do I have to go like that? <laughs> Hello, my YouTube family. It is time for another exciting episode of Nerd News. That is right. It is a show created for nerds by a nerd. And today, we're going to talk about Disney Plus's new space adventure, Star Wars The Mandalorian. I don't know why, like, this, I went like Martha Graham on you when I said space. But like we do before each and every episode, if this is your first time here, please hit the like, the subscribe, the little notification bell to be notified of all future episodes. I greatly appreciate all the likes and everything you guys do. Thank you. Mwah, 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 and, mwah. and now, onto a galaxy far, 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 far away. So they announced that there was going to be uh, spin-offs of Star Wars, right? Uh, one of them, they said, was going to be a Boba Fett uh, origin show, essentially, and everyone uh, lost their little minds. But then the movie started to roll out, and the uh, <laughs> the way that Solo performed in the box office kind of put a halt on some of those projects, which I don't understand because Solo was a fun film. I, I mean, okay, we'll get that. That's a story for another day. So the Boba Fett show is canceled. In comes John Favreau, you know, the director of Iron Man 1, bless his heart. Now John was put to the test in directing this new series on the new streaming service Disney Plus. Bounty Hunters, Star Wars, uh, uh, Disney Plus, John Favreau. I mean, yes, I'm in. I mean, you have me at Bounty Hunters. And when the show first aired, right, episode one, uh, I was hooked right away. Uh, but the cool thing about Disney Plus is that they release a new episode every Friday. So it gave you a little bit of time to, uh, you know, soak in the episodes and talk about the show and not binge watch everything all at once. So before we get into the actual show and what I thought of the entire season one, the first question, uh, I mean, at least I had hearing about the show is, when does The Mandalorian take place in the Star Wars universe? So this show takes place a few years after the return of the Jedi. It follows a lonely uh, Mandalorian, a lonely bounty hunter, on his quest to pretty much earn money and to complete his bounties and to upgrade his armor, which the gamer and all of us can relate to that. Am I right? Can I get an amen? Now, it is said that Star Wars is like a space western, right? But this show specifically is the feel of a space western. I mean, just the opening song. It's not even a song. It's opening jingle to the show. It, it, it You feel like you're walking into a saloon and everyone stops in to look at you and, you know, like chewing their tobacco and they're all, you're not from around here, are you? I mean, this is the type of Star Wars show that I was looking for, the way the atmosphere, the way that they filmed it, the uh, the music, the cinematography, I mean, it's exactly what I was looking for. The dialogue and the humor is perfect for this. It's not over the top humor. The dialogue isn't so like left field where you're like, what does that even mean? You know, like the sand line in episode two. I hate sand. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. And like I said, the cinematography in the show makes it feel like it has a budget of a giant Star Wars movie or a giant big blockbuster movie. The landscape is so vast, it makes you feel like you're actually there on those planets. They did a great job. Of course, they have to use CGI, but they didn't fully use CGI. They, they kind of blended it in with practical and CGI, which always works better. And I realize I'm doing this a lot with my hands. I, I don't know, just, just go with it. Now we needed something new in the Star Wars franchise to kind of give us a palate cleanse. Because I think um, if you like or didn't like some of the previous movies, you have to admit that kind of put them out really, really quick. They didn't space them out like every Christmas, you know? So I think this is a great like, okay, reset. And one of the tricks to this show was trying to display the Mandalorian's uh, emotion through a mask. Because he wears a mask the entire show. So how do you display anger and, 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 and sorrow and uh, humor through just no facial expression? Now we've seen this before in Tom Hardy when he played Bane. I mean, he, he held the mask on his face. 
But the thing about it is, you can see Tom Hardy's eyes, so you can tell when he was doing something. As were the Mandalorian, it, there's nothing. So it's all about his body language and how, you know, he's, this is him happy, by the way. <laughs> and the cast that they brought to this show was fantastic. There are some older actors that have experience in the business and some newer ones that are you know getting their feet off the ground carl weathers from predator is in it uh even nick nolte did a voice for one of the main characters i won't tell you who because i want you to figure it out and there's one actor that plays one of the villains in this show uh i'm not going to say his name but here's his photo now what's the first thing that popped in your mind when you saw that breaking bad yes you're correct he plays such a good villain now and now he's in the star wars universe and I'm pretty sure by now everyone knows the actor who is playing the Mandalorian. But just in case you don't know, I mean, you see his face once, but just in case you don't know, the only thing I'm going to say is the actor was in Game of Thrones. And season one had a great blend of action and uh, character development to, uh, you know, you meet all these different characters and all these different planets, all these adventures and all these different planets. It does make you feel like you're part of the Mandalorian's crew trying to, you know, earn the coin and, and turn in the bounty, upgrade your gear. I mean, it was a fun, it really did feel like a video game come to life. And how can I mention <laughs> the Mandalorian without talking about this guy? He's so cute. Now they asked Disney CEO Tom Iger if he knew that this character would be as massive of a hit. <laughs> and he, he knew it was going to be popular, but not to this extent. And the fact that they chose to make, make it not CGI in an actual puppet made, I think, the character even more adorable. Because you can actually, it's something more tangible. Something that you can actually, like, I can touch his face. I can pet his little ears and, oh my gosh, do you see the little furry white hairs on his head? Oh, he's so cute. Also, do you realize how I'm not calling it Baby Yoda? Because it's not Yoda. It's part of the Yoda's, whatever Yoda's species is. Remember, this show takes place a few years after the Return of the Jedi. At this point, actual Yoda is dead. And in the show, they do mention that this I, this child, they call it the child, that this child is 50 years old. So I, who knows? It could be uh, a reincarnation of Yoda. You jump from one Yoda-ish bite to another, I don't know. Or it's Yoda's son. That's another uh, idea that someone has that I read about on the interwebs. Guess we're gonna have to wait till season two to find out. But season one of The Mandalorian was everything I wanted in a Star Wars show and more. And season two uh, is going to just answer more questions. It's going to bring more characters and apparently they said characters that we've seen in the past in Star Wars movies will appear in season two. So the hype for season two just went boop, 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 boop. I give this show a 10 out of a 10. If you love Star Wars, if you love bounty hunters, if you like collecting loot, check it out. Uh, it's on Disney Plus and the entire uh, season one is up now so you can stream the entire thing if you want to. And like I end each and every episode, if you love this show, please check out Nerd News on Twitter and Instagram. I update those, uh, update. I update those daily so that you're notified of all just things, entertainment, news, and casting, and all that, all that jazz. And thanks for watching, guys. And remember, if you get into a shootout with a stormtrooper, just stand exactly where you are. You'll be fine. <laughs>